Mindful Life Practice Community. So as you guys all know, this is your Hanumanasana class, um, which Hanumanasana is the splits. Don't worry, you don't have to do the splits. Um, oh, there's Emma Shanahan. Yeah, everyone's coming in late. Um, you don't have to do the splits, but um, we're going to be working towards that shape. So if you have a blanket, if you have blocks, um, if you have a yoga strap, those are all awesome things to have. And if you don't, it's okay. If you don't have a strap, anything that you can hook around your foot, um, for a little bit of a leg extension. So, and there's Gemma Julie, everyone's here. <laughs> um, I know Emma Shanahan's joining from her office. She has a hula hoop in her office. So maybe she can use that. <laughs> I love to reference the hula hoop. Okay. Let me get some music going. I'm super happy all of you are here. Um, I was sharing yesterday um, that Sober Curious Yoga Week was like the most amazing week ever. But I was basically sitting on Zoom for like 12 hours straight, just watching presentations, which is very, very different than when you're um, teaching yoga all day. <laughs> and I was feeling so out of balance, so out of sorts. And I feel hundred times better after being back in the rhythm of things yesterday, back in our normal schedule. So I'm super happy you're all here. And we are going to start this practice today, lying on our back. And we're going to bring our soles of feet together and let our knees knock open and then grip opposite palms or opposite elbows overhead. This is your butterfly pose. And you just want to have that strap nearby. So Hanumanasana. This pose is named after Hanuman. And Hanuman is the king of the monkeys in Hindu mythology. And the story of Hanuman is that he was great friends with Rama. And Rama's wife, Sita, was kidnapped. And Hanuman saved the day. So in order to rescue Sita, Hanuman took this split leap from India to Sri Lanka. And that's why this pose was named after him. So this pose works on suppleness in the front and the back leg, hamstring flexibility and hip flexibility. So we're gonna stay here for a few, few more breaths. And your intention for today might be going with the flow or trusting in the process or maybe even practicing with patience. Patience to wait for the body to open. Let's draw our knees in, plant our palms on the shins, and then just circle through the knees, opening through the hips. And then we're gonna circle the other way. Good, and then just leave your left knee where it is. Take your strap, hook it around your right sole of foot, and then lengthen your left leg. So this is called soup. Supta padagustasana. Supta means recline. Pada means hand to foot pose. Pada means foot actually. Hasta means hand. So supta padagustasana, hand to foot pose. But we're not doing hand to foot, we're doing strap to foot. <laughs> Now, can you move this strap into your right hand now? And then open your right leg over to the right and use your left palm as an anchor on your left hip if it's possible, keeping your hip grounded. Good. 
So I know that obviously, ideally, we want to start our yoga classes on time. And that's always my goal. <laughs> We're going to take our right leg all the way up and then switch it the other way. So take the strap into your left palm and reach your right foot over to the left. So this is an IT band stretch and a twist. And then you just open your right arm. So the reason why I like to chat to everyone and I like to greet everyone when they come in is because I think all of us know what it feels like to feel like we're not being seen or we don't belong. Someone who is a member of the Mindful Life practice told me the other day that she went to a yoga studio for years before the pandemic and no one ever asked her at the yoga studio how she was doing that day. Let's take our right leg up. And then I want you to just release your right foot and then feel the difference from right leg compared to left. So notice if the right leg feels longer. And then we'll go the opposite way. So we're gonna take the strap around the left foot and then extend through the left leg. So anyway, I think it's really important that everyone gets seen and heard and has space to share what they need to share. And that's why I'm always late starting class because I want to greet everyone <laughs> if I can. Take a couple more breaths. And then switch your strap into your left hand and open your left leg towards the side. Breathe into your left leg. Good, and then let's take the left leg all the way up and then switch it the other way. So your left foot is gonna go over to the right. Let me just see a message in the chat. Oh, Stephanie said, I can't wait to order some stuff. Yes. <laughs> Coming with love all the way from Abu Dhabi. Good. Let's take the leg all the way up. Although Emily might be organizing a North American headquarters <laughs> of this. All right. We're going to rock up now. And we're going to try something. I'm going to invite you to try it and just see how it feels. So I want you to have your knees together. Let your toes come wide. And then sit your hips back in between your heels. Okay? And if this is all right for you, stay. If it doesn't feel okay, then come back up. And if you do have space, I'm going to invite you to come all the way back. This is hero's pose. Know that every single human being has lived a very different journey in their lives with their bodies, with their minds, with their spirits. And so everyone is going to approach every pose differently. And what I can do might not be what someone else can do and vice versa. And that this has nothing to do with anyone's skills. It just has to do with our different bodies, our different histories, our different stories. Take one more breath. And then we're gonna come all the way up. Good, and then roll the feet in. And then just come to tuck the toes. Sit back on the heels, take your palms forward. Circle your palms one way and then the other. And then plant your palms on the mat, tuck the toes, lift all the way up to your down dog, and then we'll bend one knee and bend the next. So speaking of my yoga teacher training, there are three people in this room that 
finished their yoga teacher training and are doing yoga teaching for the mindful life practice this season. Let's ripple all the way forward into plank and then back into down dog. So Lee now has three classes on the schedule, two of them for Eastern standard evenings. So we're got, going back and forth from down dog to plank while I'm talking to you. <laughs> so two during Eastern standard evenings, one during Eastern standard mornings. So if you have time to flow with Lee, I highly recommend it. Nadia is amazing. She has one class tonight. She is incredible. Check out Nadia's class. And Neve is also amazing. And Neve does a 6.30 a.m. Abu Dhabi time class. It's 9.30 Thailand. So I highly recommend checking those out. Take a breath in, come all the way forward into plank. And then you're gonna move through a flow. I just wanna make sure I didn't miss anyone. Oh my God, Emma. Wow, there's lots of yoga teachers in here. I'm coming to check out who's here. Gretchen is teaching Kundalini yoga for us on Thursday nights. And Emma is almost done her yoga teacher training. She has two modules left. All right, from your down dog, let's come all the way up to down dog. And I did Kundalini yoga with Gretchen the other day. It was amazing. My hip flexors were so tight. Leave your left foot where it is. Lift your right leg up. Tight after the workout because it was a really good workout. Let's draw the right knee in. We're going to step the foot between the palms. Inhale, lift all the way up to a crescent. Good. Exhale, open to a warrior two. You got it. Inhale, reverse the warrior. And then windmill the palms all the way. Frame the mat. Frame the foot. Step the right foot back. And then move through a flow, lowering down, opening the heart. Coming all the way up to down dog. Let's flow the opposite way. So take your left leg up. Draw the left knee in, step the foot between the palms. Lift up. Good, open up to warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Come all the way up to warrior two. Windmill the palms to the mat and frame the foot. Nice work. Step your left foot back. Move through a flow. And now I wanna give you an opportunity to do one more flow. Moving with your own breath, doing what feels good for you. And we'll meet back in down dog. So take the right leg up. Wait, I'm not cueing you. You're moving on your own. <laughs> so do what feels right for you. Add in whatever you like. We'll all meet up at the end in the down dog. Notice how it feels tuning into your breath, your body. Nice. We're almost all yoga teachers in the room. Gretchen or Annabelle teaches yoga as well. Oh, wow. Annabelle's doing Bird of Paradise. I love it. <laughs> nice. When you're done, your little flow.
we'll all congregate back in our down dogs. And then come onto the knees, come back into a table. Good, and from your table, can you walk your hands forward and just open your heart a little bit? So during this class, we are gonna be working towards the splits every single week. And we're gonna be opening parts of the body that we wanna target here like hamstrings, like quads, even opening through the heart, the hip flexor. We're walking through the first four chakras. Let's allow the palms to come all the way back up to a table. Nice, tuck your toes, lift all the way up, down dog. Take your right leg up, three-legged dog. And then pull the right knee in, step the right foot between the palms. Good, and then we're gonna land onto the left knee. And then just interlace the palms, place them on the right thigh. Breathing in and out, settling your gaze. Let's take another breath. And then lift the arms up towards the sky. Just have the arms extended for a few breaths. Before reaching the arms forward, leave the left palm where it is. Spiral the right arm all the way back. Can you reverse your warrior now, landing your right palm on the left thigh, coming all the way forward landing your left palm to the inside of the right foot. Good, and then let's potentially move into a quad stretch if it's accessible in your body, but be mindful of what your body is telling you, right? If it's telling you that this is uncomfortable or this doesn't work, feel free to back off or even modify with a strap. Good, if you have the foot, release it. Take the right palm onto the right thigh, walk the right foot towards the side of the mat, and then push your right palm into your right thigh. This is a lizard stretch. And you might gaze over the right shoulder. Oh yeah, I need Neve's playlist. That's the other thing. Neve had a great playlist in her class the other day. Take another breath. And then can you allow the left foot to come inwards? Or sorry, that's the right foot. <laughs> We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna take the right foot across the width of the mat and come into a pigeon. Good, and I know it's super early on. Take a breath in and then come forward. So Yasmin said to me once that she, hates it when teachers put a pigeon in the middle of a flow because pigeon's supposed to be at the end of the class so I apologize if you feel that way too about pigeon <laughs> but we want to have really open hips when we're coming into this Hanumanasana take one more breath and then come up onto the palms Good, tuck your left toes, lift all the way up, all the way back to your down dog. 
And then we'll come the other way. So lift your left leg up, big breath in. Draw the left knee in, step the left foot between the palms. Nice work, land onto your right knee. And now can you just land both palms on the thigh? Settle your gaze forward. And then allow both palms to lift all the way back up, gazing forwards. And now how does it feel to reach both arms forward? Leave the right arm where it is. Spiral the left arm all the way back. Good, reverse the warrior just for a moment. So lay on the left palm on the right thigh, lift the right arm up. We just lost someone. I don't know who left. Maybe their internet cut out. Come all the way forward, land the right palm. And then maybe you kick the right foot back, traveling into a quad stretch, if it works for your body. Nice. Doing what works for you. And then release the right foot. Take your left palm onto the left thigh and then just shift it open as you roll into this lizard twist. So in our practice, we're learning to stay with the posture, to hold the posture through difficulty, discomfort, fear, boredom, distraction. The entire gamut of thoughts and emotions and arises and we're just experiencing their comings and goings right let's lift back up now and then walk the left foot across the width of the mat and come into that pigeon so we're learning to use what comes up to inform the present posture to help us in postures to come and to apply it to our lives outside of our yoga mats. Take another breath. Can you come onto your hands? Tuck your right toes, lift all the way up to downward facing dog. Draw the right leg up, three-legged dog. Draw the right knee in. We're gonna step the right foot between the palms, lift all the way up, and we're gonna move through a really short mandala flow today, okay? So open up into warrior two, and then move with your breath. Inhaling, reversing, and then exhaling elbow onto the knee. So we're moving with the inhales and exhales. Moving like water, ending like fire. Good, can you just do three more? Two more. Good, and then a last one. before pressing through the feet, lifting all the way up, lengthening through the right leg, shorten the stance, reach the right arm forward, clock the right arm alongside the right calf, lift the left arm up. This is your trikonasana, your triangle pose. And the intention is to have a spreading through our collarbone, a lengthening through the side body. And can you trust that the right foot will hold you and explore shifting weight onto the right foot and the right fingertips? Breathing in and out for three, for two, 
And then one, step your foot all the way up, turn all 10 toes to the side wall, and then hinge forward. And can you allow your right palm to land, lift your left arm up? Good, and then rotate left palm lands, right arm lifts. Good, doing one more of each. And then plant the palms onto the hips, lift all the way up. Good. Turn your left toes to the back of the mat. Step your right foot all the way in. And now we're squaring our hips towards the back of the mat. We're gonna lift both arms upwards, reach the arms forward, and then see if you can hinge the arms to frame the left foot. So this is pyramid. And if you have blocks, if this is a far reach, you could have hands on the blocks. You could have hands on your ankle, your shin. And then leave the right palm, lift the left arm all the way up. Good, and then can you shift weight onto your right fingertips and left foot, lift your right leg all the way behind you. So this is a revolved half moon. Just staying here for three, for two. And then on one, come all the way up to stand. And just take a moment with both feet pointing towards the back of the mat. Know that you are facing the right direction. And you are exactly where you're meant to be. Can you leave your left foot where it is and just lift your right leg up? And we're just going to lift our right leg as high as we can while keeping our spine lengthened. So we're not leaning backwards. We're keeping our spine lengthened upwards. Lift it higher for four, for three. Good. Two. And then on one, just step your foot all the way back down. Inhale, arms all the way up. Good, exhale, fold. Breathing in, halfway lift. Good, exhaling, lower and planting the palms. Nice, moving through a flow. Good, and then eventually coming all the way back to your down dog. Nice. who we lost, whose internet cut out, not sure. All right, left leg is gonna lift up towards the sky, three-legged dog. And then we're gonna journey through that flow on the opposite side. So you're gonna draw the left knee in, you got it. Step your left foot between your palms. Nice, and then lift all the way up and open into a warrior two. Good, so open hip facing the side wall. Check out your alignment. You want that left knee stacking on the left ankle. You look, guys look great. Yeah, very good. Nice, Annabelle. Being really strong and steady for a moment. And then flowing with the breath. Inhale, reverse. Exhale. Elbow to knee. Good, and keep going like this. Good, just three more. Two more. Good, and then a the last one. Lifting all the way up, lengthening through the left leg, shortening the stance, reaching the left arm forward. Left arm clocks alongside left ankle, reach the right arm up. Nice, and then can you shift weight onto your left foot, left fingertips, landing in your half moon for a few breaths.
Nice, taking one more breath. And then step the right foot all the way back. Turn all 10 toes, the side wall, inhale. Hinge all the way forward. Leave your right palm where it is. Lift your left arm up. Good. Exhale, left palm lands. Right palm lifts. Good work. Do one more of each. Plant the palms onto the hips. Lift all the way up. Good, turn your right toes to the front of the mat again. Step your left foot in, lift the arms up, reach the arms forward, allow the palms to dangle, framing the right foot. And then maybe you leave the left palm where it is and lift the right arm all the way up. So you're revolving into this pyramid. Good, and then maybe you shift weight onto your right foot, extend your left leg, extend your right arm. Good, take a few more breaths. And then can you come all the way up to stand? Press the palms together. Allow the palms to land alongside the hips and we'll do one more thing. Leave our right foot anchored, lift our left leg as high as we can. Good, for five, keeping our spine lengthened. Four, three, Good, two, and then one, land the left foot. Good, can you step your feet wide now? Toes out, heels in, bend through the knees, sit down into a squat. Awesome. So we are going to, in a moment, prepare for our splits pose. So what you need nearby is potentially a blanket if you have a slippery floor. And if you don't have a slippery floor, that's totally fine. It's just a nice way to prop it. And blocks can also be handy. So I'm going to, told you guys all to have a blanket. I don't even have one. I'm gonna use my Mindful Life sweater. <laughs> so hopefully my floor is clean. <laughs> so I'm gonna place this fabric in front of my mat and basically it's just gonna add a slidey surface and I'm gonna scooch my mat back and you could even fold over your mat. So basically what I'm gonna do is place my um, sweater thing in front of my mat, take my blocks, and I'm gonna allow my left knee to be on the mat. And don't worry too much if you accomplish this pose or not, it's not about accomplishing. The cool thing is we're gonna do this every week for eight weeks. So every week you're gonna see if you get a little deeper into the pose. So with your right heel on your blanket or your sock or whatever, you're just gonna let your heel slide forward and see how far it goes. And if you are, like me, I have a bit more space. You could just stay exactly as you are, or you might explore using your block to support your leg, potentially lifting your arms. Please be super, super mindful and careful of what your body is telling you. Um, because this has taken me like 10 years and I still cannot reach the floor and I'm super careful. So just be mindful of what feedback your body is giving you nice. And know that the pose is not the goal. Good, let's take one more breath.
And then we're going to slide the heel all the way back. And then just switch the other way. So right knee lands, left foot lands on the sweater or blanket, sliding the leg forward, knowing that this side might be totally different. And that's okay. Landing wherever you land for a few breaths. And knowing that wherever you land is exactly where you're meant to be. Take another breath. And then allow the heel to come all the way back. Nice sliding whatever props you have out of the way. And we're just gonna shift back into a little child's pose. And I just want you to check in with yourself. How is your mind? How is your body? How is everything feeling? Good. Take one more breath. And then lift all the way up. Nice. So we're going to do a little bit of back bending because we've done so much forward folding. So you're just going to come onto the knees. Press the palms onto the sacrum, shift the hips forward. And then maybe the palms go all the way back to the heels and you just keep your chin tucked. stretching through the arches of the feet. Good, coming all the way up, palms onto the hips. We're gonna shift all the way back. Coming all the way onto the spine. And then just open the arms into cactus. Drop the knees to the left, gaze over to the right. So I think one of the best lessons we can learn from Hanumanasana is patience. Right, we live in this world of on demand, of instant, you know, Netflix and food delivered. I mean, gone are the days when you had to walk over to the store to rent a VHS. <laughs> and even the days before that, when you would have to wait to see a movie at the theaters, right? We live in a world where we can get everything we want in an instant. Lift our legs all the way up. And then drop the knees to the right, gaze over the left shoulder, but our bodies haven't evolved that way, have they? Right, 
opening up the body takes practice. It takes patience. It takes devotion. And that's okay, right? Because it's a practice. And all we need to do is just show up for it. And I think all of us know that the rewards from this practice go much further than just being able to touch your toes. Right, it's about mindfulness, it's about compassion, it's about learning to let go, it's about forgiveness. Take the knees all the way up, giving your body a bit of a hug. My music has stopped, that's okay. Can you still hear it? No, that's okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's fine. The end anyway. We're gonna stretch our legs out. Coming into our final resting pose. Taking big breaths in and out. Oh my God, there was no music playing the whole time. Oh my God. <laughs> I was listening to music the whole time. I never shared it with you guys. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God, this is Zoom yoga. You know, I and I never found out today because I never told you guys um, in sweat classes, sometimes I'll, I'll just start saying, I love this song. And that's when I'll find out that no one can hear the music, but <laughs> you know, I no longer beat myself up over these things. I no longer worry about them even. And that comes from the mantra that the universe has my back. The universe has all of our backs. And every single thing that happens along the path of our lives or our days is on purpose to lead us in a certain direction. And so maybe what was needed for you guys to practice in was silence and And for me, it was music. I don't know, but I'll take it. <laughs> so as you settle into the silence and settle into your breath, rest here for a moment, knowing that I'm going to bring you back when the time is up.
Giving your body a wake up wiggle, a stretch from fingers to toes. Curling the knees into the chest, giving our body a sweet little hug. And then just making our way up into a seated position with the palms at the heart center. Closing with the intention. the ancient intention, but the original intention. And it's been passed from heart to heart through thousands of years. And it's that our practice remains steady and our efforts remain continuous and that our yoga helps and heals and it serves and it benefits all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe. May they all be healthy, happy, and free. May the thoughts and the actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. Let's finish with an ohm sound, breathing in and breathing out and breathing in to make the ohm. So taking a large breath in and a deep breath out. you guys so much for joining me for sharing the space and the practice the light in me it sees and it honors the light in you thank you yogis <laughs>